Hi, and welcome back. If you previously watched my video lab on diffusion, if not, then hopefully you'll enjoy this follow-up video lab on osmosis. Now for this lab, we are going to use four chicken eggs as models to represent four cells. We're also going to use three, I'm also going to use three very lovely assistants from the audience to help assist me in this lab. Now in order to demonstrate the process of osmosis, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these four chicken eggs and we're going to remove the shells from them in order to get to the semi-permeable membrane underneath. Unfortunately, cracking these eggs open is not going to give us our desired results. That's just going to leave us with a big mess. So what we're going to do in order to get rid of these eggshells is we're going to place them into a container of vinegar so Christine, can you take these four chicken eggs and put them in the vinegar, please? Now, vinegar is a weak acid. It is actually a 2% acetic acid, while the eggshell is made of a substance called calcium carbonate. And when you place something made of calcium carbonate into an acidic acid, the acid will dissolve it. Now, because your teeth, like these eggshells, are made of a stone-like material containing mostly calcium, it is always a good idea to brush your teeth after drinking a soda or eating something like vinegar salad. All right, now that Christine has dropped the four eggs into the vinegar and has covered it to make sure the vinegar doesn't evaporate, what we need to do is wait for two days for the vinegar to completely remove the shells from these eggs. And obviously, since we don't have, nobody wants to sit around and watch this um, watch the process of the vinegar slowly dissolving the eggshells. So what I had previously done is taken four eggs just like this, placed them in this jar of vinegar, and now have taken them out and removed them and put them in this container. So Rachel, can you open up the container and show us what eggs that have been sitting in vinegar for two days look like? Okay, so these eggs have been, again, sitting in the vinegar for two days. And basically, what we're left with is a rubbery, bouncy object. Go ahead and bounce them a little bit, Rachel. And it's these rubbery, bouncy objects, which are the membranes of the cell, and which we are going to be using to demonstrate the process of osmosis with, which is also sometimes referred to as passive membrane transport. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. Um, go ahead and hand your eggs to Julia. For the next step in this video lab on osmosis, we're going to take these four eggs and put them into four different jars containing four different solutions, or at least three different solutions. One of them isn't a solution. Okay, so the first jar contains water, H2O water. So Julia, can you put the first egg into that? The second container contains carol corn syrup. You can buy it at any store. Julia, can you put the egg in that? Great. The next container is a 5% salt solution. And Julia, can you put that in there? And the fourth container is, contains nothing but air. Go ahead and put the egg in that. And we're going to use this egg as our control group egg uh, to, to measure how much these eggs have changed, are going to change or not change. Now we're going to leave these eggs in here for two days before we measure their change. And obviously, since we don't have two days to sit and wait to see what happens to all these eggs, I have previously set aside four eggs just like these in these containers and have taken them out so that we can see what happens to these eggs after they've been seeing these solutions for two days. So Julia, can you move over to station four, please? I mean station three. Okay, the first container here in station three is the container labeled control group. Julia, can you open that up, please? Um, as you can see, the egg that was, in, that was just sitting in nothing but air for the last two days is the same size it was when I placed it in this container two days ago. And this is the egg we're going to be using to model how these other eggs have changed or haven't changed. 
Okay, now the second container is labeled H2O or water. It's what we call a hypotonic solution. Julia, can you take the egg out of that one? As you can see, the egg that has been sitting in the water is much larger than the control group egg. And the reason for this is osmosis. Osmosis, by definition, is the movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of greater water concentration to an area of lesser water, to water concentration. As a result, the egg cell that has been, as a result, the egg cell having a lower concentration of water inside the cytoplasm and wanting to be in a state of equilibrium with the water around it, allowed water in the outside to pass through its membrane into it, filling it up and swelling it up. All right, let's take a look at the third egg, the caramel corn syrup egg. Julia, can you take that egg out? Now, the coral corn syrup that this egg has, base, has been sitting in is basically nothing more than a sugar solution. And as you can see, the egg that has been placed is what we call a hypertonic solution, this sugar solution. And as you can see, the egg that has been, that it has been, that has been sitting in this solution is all shriveled up and has become dehydrated. And the reason for this is also osmosis. However, in this case, the water, instead of moving through the cell membrane into the cytoplasm, moved in the opposite direction, out of the egg cell, through the membrane, and into the corn syrup solution. So for this example, the egg cell, in an attempt to bring balance to the force of osmosis, allowed the water to exit the cell through its semi-permeable membrane and enter into the Carol corn syrup solution. Okay, Julia, can you step aside just for a second before we go to the fourth container. Now, let me just make a quick point. Neither of these two conditions, neither of these two cells are ideal for the cells in our body. What we would like to do is maintain the cells in our body in an isotonic, a healthy isotonic state in which the amount of dissolved material inside our cells and the amount of water inside our cells is just the same or equal to the amount of water and dissolved materials outside our cells. With that, Julia, can you come over and take out the egg in the 5% salt water solution? Now this solution is what we call an isotonic solution and it has approximately equal amounts of both solutes or dissolved material and water in the cell as was in the surrounding solution. Now remember, this egg has been sitting in a solution for two days, and yet it is virtually the same size as the control group egg. And that's because the amount of water and dissolved materials inside this egg was the same as the amount of water and dissolved materials in the salt water solution. And so as a result, osmosis did not occur. Um, and it stayed, and both these eggs stayed in what we call a state of homeostasis. Okay, Julia, step aside just one more time. Okay. Now, this is also what goes on with the fluids and electrolyte balances in our body as we try to keep our, our cells from going to either types of these extremes and instead, instead maintain itself in an isotonic state. That's why when we go to a hospital and they hook us up with an IV, it's connected to a saline solution. Because if they were to simply, if the doctors were simply to inject water into our veins or arteries, what would happen is the red blood cells in our veins and arteries would swell up and burst. All right, having said that, let's take a look at the vocabulary words up there on the overhead. Um, you'll need to copy these words into your notebooks for a follow-up vocabulary activity so that, we can, uh, so that we can a little better understand the process of osmosis, uh, which we just did this lab on.